a local businessman, he's a consultant, uh, he's a, a very, very effective um, journalist. Uh, he's really done a wonderful job, especially in the local um, politics, in keeping us abreast of what is happening. Uh, the people that uh, we are interested in, especially the political scene, um, he's, held, he's tried anyway to hold their feet to the fire, so to speak. Some of them have responded, some of them are reluctant for obvious reasons because there's nothing there. The last thing is that, as you may know, uh, three years ago, um, he was a candidate for congressman for a 22nd district. I think that he's going to cover some important areas tonight about what's happening right now with our 22nd district. Michael, so rather than me babbling on any further, why don't you come up here and um, okay. relay pertinent information to us. Thank you. Hello everyone, how are we doing today? Fine. Okay. okay. And everyone can hear me okay? Sure. Uh, I think you all know me, Michael Vasquez, also go by Michael Voss because of my political writing. Political commentator for, we just hit nine and a half years now that I've been doing it. So that's a nice little breakthrough. In addition, had a nice little uh, milestone that we hit just uh, about two weeks ago. In my 2000th article that was written about political commentary, which averages out to about 215 articles every year, and that includes the year I took off to run for Congress. So that puts me right up there with any major news media that you can think of. Uh, it's a lot of work, and I love doing it. I love coming out to speak because it matters. Every time I do this, is just that much more information, that much more of an opportunity for people to know what's going on. And so I thank you for having me here with you today. Now, as I'm sure some of you may be familiar, I don't do speeches. I, I don't like reading off of prompters. I don't like reading off of charts. I do have a couple little notes, but I just want to speak with you. I want to talk with you about things that I think are very important, not only in the 2016 presidential race, but what are going to be important in our New York 22nd district. And even from there, taking down to the local level, what we're going to see in the 52nd state senate race, what we're going to see in our legislators' races, and all the races all the way down. Uh, there's a very big thing that I think most people tend to forget. And it's, it's not even that people are forgetting. They are encouraged to not realize. And that very simple thing is, you are the power of the government. The government is sitting right here. Our local government is you. We are the government. We elect the officials. We re-elect the officials. We vote and give them the strength to go out there and pass laws. At every stage and at every level of our government, we are the power. But you don't hear that very often, do you? You don't hear people say, oh, I am the government. I'm in charge. You don't hear people say, that representative works for me. You hear it the other way around. Governor Cuomo tells us what we are going to get as a law and how we have to react to the law he wants to put out. He's going to tell us what is our message of necessity and what we must do immediately because he decided that's the rules that are going to be guiding all of us, not the other way around. And I'll take a great example of that is the New York 20, uh, is the SAFE Act. We all know the New York SAFE Act. Beautiful piece of legislation if you happen to hate the Second Amendment. I don't. And that wonderful piece of legislation passed overnight in the middle of the night without any connection to the public whatsoever 
We didn't get told about it ahead of time. We weren't warned. They just passed it and said, here it is. Nancy Pelosi's pass it so you can find out what it is put into absolute reality. January 2013, there we go. Bang. And the Second Amendment suddenly becomes that much weaker, that much less effective. Because one man said, I don't like it. And when we think about that, what has it done? And I bet you no one's actually stopped and said, anyone you know who said, oh, I support the Second Amendment, uh, the New York State Act, which, I don't know, there's, what, 3% of the entire population of New York that agree with it? That's the compliance rate. Uh, those few people, when you stop and you ask them, what has it done? How much safer are you? You may sleep well at night thinking we have this wonderful law that suddenly is protecting us, except when you actually look at the numbers, murders are even or up, 2014, 2015. Those numbers, by the way, come from New York State itself. New York State itself did a study in Binghamton. We are exactly on par with the average number of murders by firearm as we have been at any point over the last 15 years. 15 years. There is no change statistically. The only difference would be, of course, when we saw that horrible incident with the American Civic Association, which is a freak incident. And that happens as we see throughout the nation, nothing stops that. Because crazy people do crazy things. And they do them with bricks, they do them with knives, they do them with anything they can get their hands on, and when they can't, with just their bare hands. So let's throw that out, because that's not Binghamton. That's not normal. What is normal? is exactly what we're seeing right now. No difference. But yet, the law said we're going to be safer. We're going to be OK. You can sleep at night because the bad guys won't get a assault weapon, whatever that is. And they won't have more than seven bullets in it. So you're going to be safe. Yeah, it sounds really stupid when you say it out loud, doesn't it? It sounds absolutely nonsensical when we say it out loud, because it is. And the only reason why we can get away, why Governor Cuomo can get away with something like that, is when we stop remembering that we are the government. We decide the laws that are necessary and where the emergency is. I'm not saying that we couldn't have a message of necessity. I'm not saying after the horrible Sandy Hook shootings, that we couldn't, as a state and as a community, come together and have a conversation about what we will or will not accept to change or modify who has what kind of firearm. Fine, we can have that discussion. Because as citizens, that's our communication. That's how we pass laws. But the first step is we go and we speak amongst ourselves, to our legislators, our elected officials, and then they go up the chain. That's the process. But that process has been completely inverted. And it hasn't happened overnight. This isn't, you know, as much as I may want to pick on Governor Cuomo for a host of many, many problems and many things that he's done to drive people out of New York State, which is also a fact. 600,000 people since he's been in office, over $2 trillion worth of business left the state since he's been in office. So yeah, I have a pet peeve with him, if it is. But I can't blame him for this. I really can't. I have to be honest. I have to blame the source of the problem. That's us. It's me. It's all of us. We're not stepping up. We haven't done enough. And I'm not saying that any one individual has in any way failed. I don't want to say it like that. But I mean us as a community, us as a state, us as a nation. We have allowed 30-second sound bites. We've allowed commercials. We've allowed 
messages on text and in Facebook to suddenly dominate and decide for us all of our legislation, all of our political leaders. All of a sudden, we no longer control our country. Our government controls our country and tells us what we can and cannot do. And they get away with it because here's a 30-second soundbite. And it's as simple as New York Safe Act. You'll be safe. Go to sleep at night. You're protected because we, the government, said so. And absolutely nothing made you safer. In fact, if you're like me, I overnight became a criminal because the very same firearm I had for my self-defense in my home was suddenly classified as being an assault weapon. Literally, I went to sleep. It was, it was just a shotgun. I wake up in the morning, it's an assault weapon, and I'm now illegal. I have, I've committed a crime because I woke up. <laughs> Again, when you say it out loud, it sounds absolutely ridiculous. How can you possibly say this? I went to sleep, I'm perfectly law-abiding, I wake up in the morning, I'm a criminal now. Nothing else in the universe has changed besides Andrew Cuomo's signature on a piece of paper because he said so. That's not where America works. And he got away with that because he sold the message that you're now safer. And then when we look at the numbers, no, you're not. Just like with me, nothing else changed. The criminals didn't get any more scared. They didn't stop having the weapons they get. They didn't stop using them the way they used them. The only thing that happened is Governor Cuomo got a little more attention, got a little closer to his presidency, and we got a lot less rights.